Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Pigments. This is video 40, and today we're finally talking about functions. So what are functions and how do they function? According to the manual, they say that if envelopes and LFOs had a baby, that's what functions would be. And that's a very good way to put it. I totally agree with that. So bravo to whoever put that in the manual. So let's modulate this cutoff here with a function. So let's grab this function one and then drag it over to our cutoff here and kind of increase this uh, this modulation amount to maybe like 0.57 or something like that, just so we can really see what's going on here. Or something kind of right here, maybe 0.43, doesn't really matter. But yeah, so we can already see that it's working. We can see it moving, so let's take a listen. So that's just, that's just me moving a note or holding down a note. Pretty simple so far, and you might be thinking, okay, well, this is just this downward motion. That's kind of like if we use an LFO in saw mode, and we drag this LFO to the cutoff. It's the same thing, right? In this situation, yes. However, with functions, you can do a little bit more than just what the LFOs can offer. So right now, we are in LFO mode, as we can see right here, which is why it's kind of just continuously going on and on and on. We'll, ho we'll hold a note. It'll be re-triggered. Every time we hit a note, and that's because it's getting re-triggered by this poly keyboard, which you should be familiar with that we've covered in the previous videos. And we have all those different sources here. So for right now, we're going to be in poly keyboard. So whenever we hit a note, it's going to trigger the shape to start moving this cutoff knob. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, this has a couple different modes. So right here on play mode in the center here, this is basically saying loop mode. So loops and restarts on re-trigger source. So when I hold it down, it's just going to keep re-triggering and re-triggering and re-triggering. Now, we can also go to this one here. This is a play once kind of thing. So we hit it one time, and then it does its shape, and then it's done. So let's click this here, and that's it. We can see this curve right here corresponds to this line right here. Okay, cool. And now we have this other mode here, and this is basically loops and does not restart. So this is basically free running mode. So it's always going to be going, and then whenever we hit a note, it's going to say wherever it was in the value of the shape, that's what we're going to hear. So those are the three basic ways to play in LFO mode. So let's go over here to re-trigger sort, or this uh, play once mode. So hitting it one time, and it triggers the shape once. Okay, so now let's kind of get into this here. So over here on draw mode, this first one here is basically we're going to be putting in points. So if we left click, we drop a node here. And if you notice, once we left click and drop this point, these two little lines appeared and our cursor is going to change. And that's how we can change this curve here as we can do over here as well. So we can make really interesting shapes by clicking in nodes and then changing the curves however we want to. So we'll put another one up here, put it way up here, and then bring this really down. So I mean, something like that. So this is going to be the spot where you can really customize your modulation shapes. Now, let's say you want to delete a point as easy as right clicking the node that you just placed down, and then you can go back to where you were before, and then you can always double click or let's see if we can double click that. There we go to, uh, to bring it back to normal. Alternatively, there's a lot of presets down here. So if you have some crazy shape like this and you're like, oh man, I just want to start over again. You can go to presets and then go to init here, and then you're right back where you started. Easy way to get back to that. So moving on from that, we have a couple different draw modes. So this one here is going to be in steps. So if you want to do something kind of blocky like this, you can totally do that. Very cool. Let's go back to init as well. And then we also have these drawing modes for this triangle kind of shape. Now this is going to be kind of slanted towards the right. And the opposite is going to be slanted towards the left like that. So it becomes very easy and intuitive to kind of just draw a lot of shapes here. And then we can later on come back here and then start adjusting some different types of curves here to kind of make some kind of customized kind of rhythmic thing right here. And you're thinking, okay, this is cool, but this is very fast. So here on the bottom left, we have our rate. So this is going to decide how slow or how fast we want this function to move. So we can change these shapes here, make something kind of rhythmic. So it gets very, very uh, in-depth pretty quick here. There's also a lot of different types of presets that come stock with the synth here. So we can go to Rhythmic 1 and kind of see this shape here. Let's kind of turn this a little bit faster. So 
so yeah, it's pretty easy to get some cool going over like that so feel free to check out a lot of these different shapes there's a lot of really cool ones you can always click these little arrows too if you want to uh just kind of scroll through these So we can always go back to init right here and then over to the right here there's this little kind of square windows here and this is going to be the copy paste function so if you have something kind of crazy going on like this and you're like i really really like the shape i want it to be also on function two to maybe do it half time or whatever it is you want to do you can always click this here and then copy to function two and then we scroll over here or click here to function two and it's going to be the same and then three still going to be init because we haven't really messed with it yet so yeah, that's kind of cool as well here. So let's go to presets, init here, and then copy two back to one. So now this should be initialized as well. Then we have magnetize. So when we were dropping in nodes for or nodes for these different draw modes here, we kind of can we can kind of move it within this little uh, between these lines, but it also kind of snaps to these lines here. We can always take that off if you want something a little bit more organic. So we don't always have to snap to the grid if we don't want to. And then if you want to snap back to it, then hit uh, magnetize, and then boom, now you're going to be magnetized to these lines here, kind of quantization there. So go back to, or before we go to initialize, we have this last scale here. So let's say you know something cool like this and it's a little bit too much. You can always drag this down a little bit here and kind of smooth it out a little bit. So it's not too intense as this shape was here. So we can always scale it a little bit like that. And it leaves the points here in case you ever want to go back or something like that. And then we can also invert it that way, which is kind of cool too. So really easy knob to do that with. And it's also automatable as you see the little plus here. So imagine the possibilities you can do with that. So back to initializing here. This right hand menu is kind of interesting as well. So we have these points here that we kind of just randomly dropped in here. Now we can scroll through our individual points through this scroll window right here. If we don't want to really mess with anything on this grid here, let's say we go to point five right here and it's a little highlighted with this little circle over this white dot here. Now we can choose the timing we want to do with this or we can choose the volume or the level the amount that we want to change this here. So it's kind of more a uh, precision type of node editing with this right hand menu here. And then here at the bottom is the dice again, so it's random. So when you click this and drag this up, it's going to do some randomization to your shape. And then once you let go, it's going to apply those and then reset this random here. So this is kind of something that you kind of want to be careful a little bit with. And if you don't like it, you may want to try to do some undos right here. Because once you move this and let go, it's going to go back to zero and apply your changes. So something to keep in mind there. So... Last thing before we move on to the envelope is we're going to be in unipolar and bipolar. So let's go back to initialize here. So we can see here, once this function is getting triggered, it's only going on this half side here because right now it's in unipolar mode. If we go to bipolar, now we can see it's doing a bipolar kind of move. So going from the left side to the, or from the right side to the left side. If you're maybe familiar with Serum, it's kind of like switching the bipolar to polar or also in Vital does that as well too. So it's kind of good to get to understand what bipolar is and what unipolar is because it can make a really big difference in your sound. And a way to think about it is that if we are on unipolar and we want to modulate something and kind of stop where our, our cursor kind of thing is or where our knob little value thing is, whatever you want to call it, that little marking here, unipolar is going to be a great way to do that. Whereas bipolar is going to kind of like see that as the center point and kind of move around that. So that pretty much covers the LFO. So now is going to be for the envelope. So it's really not that much different, but there is some little differences that we should talk about. So click over here on LFO and go over to envelope. So we have a couple different play modes. That's really kind of the only thing that's really changing. Now we see this the same shape here. Let's go back to uh, unipolar here for this envelope. And let's drag this first note out and spring kind of over here. Now you see this one has an S on it and that means sustain. So if we hit a note here, it's gonna hold on that sustain on that node until you let go of the key. Now that's not something you can remove. That S is always gonna be there in envelope mode. So don't go looking for a place to remove that S because you cannot. But you can also move this over here and then maybe make some shapes bef before it or after it, kind of however you want to do that with. And then it's still gonna hold on that sustain point and then draw the rest of the shape. So for this example, let's give ourselves a little bit more release so we can kind of hear what's happening after the sustain here. 
Okay, cool. So now our modes over here is going to be this loop here. So we select this here and we hold down a note and it's going to loop as long as we hold this note down, it's going to loop this section in here. And then once we let go, it's going to then finish its shape. And we can always move the start and end with this, uh, these little values down here on start and end. Now this is, this is very useful because let's say we turn this off, right? And we see our sustain right here. So let's say we really like this shape, but we don't want the sustain to be on this node. We want it to be maybe on one of these, or let's say, let's make a new one right here. Let's put this node right here. And we say, okay, we like the shape, I don't like this stain on this node. I want to move it over here. So an easy way to do that is click this right here and then scroll to the end point of whatever you want your sustain to be and then remove it. Now that's going to change to that, that node. Now that's going to be the new sustain value. So those are uh, pretty much functions in a nutshell. They're very, very cool and very customizable. You get three of those and you can change all sorts of things within this as well. So definitely go and play around with these in, in conjunction between your regular envelopes, your LFOs, then your functions. And then so we're going to get into randoms and combinates, which are really cool options once you kind of like dig under the hood and see what they're all about. There's a lot of possibilities out there. So hopefully this video has helped you out. If there's any more questions you have on functions or anything really in general, please let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.